All right, well, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to change the oil on a 2010 Porsche Panamera S. I started off by getting it up on the ramps and the front of the car doesn't have very much clearance. So to help it up on the ramps without scraping, I just put a little piece of plywood on each side, which gave it the clearance to get up. Uh, next step here is to get underneath it and we need to remove the cover that's down here. This black cover here that expands all the way back to the end of the transmission there. Um, there you go, it's coming into focus. We got uh, these uh, Torx fasteners, I believe they're a T25, and it looks like there's 19 of them all the way down. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the whole cover I've done the oil change before where I've only dropped half of the cover down and it's enough to give you access to everything you need to do the oil change. But this time I wanna um, wash or clean the bottom of the engine so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the whole cover. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that first and then uh, show you the rest of the process. All right, now I've gotten the black cover off of the underneath uh, front half of the car now what's next is this bracket here. Let's see if I can get a better, give you a better view. This one right here. This bracket, I've already loosened it up. It has two bolts there on the ends. And then um, three up here in the front. They are a 13 millimeter. And the reason I'm going to take this off is because the oil filter housing is right here. You can see it right there. And it just makes it easier to access and drain if I get this bracket off. It's just those uh, six bolts, so it's pretty simple. Other than that, that's about all we got to prep to do the oil change. Once I get that bracket off, we'll go ahead and remove the filter, drain the oil there. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, seepage. I have a slight leak in the power steering pump, and I believe that's what this fluid is. So that's why I wanted to get that cover off the whole way so I can go ahead and clean all this uh, gunk and grime off while I'm doing this. So I'll go ahead and get this uh, bracket removed and then we'll start, uh, I'm too close here, I can't get everything in the shot, and get this bracket removed here. And then I'll go ahead and start doing the oil change. All right, here I am, I'm getting the housing off. It takes a 36 millimeter, like basically, like a specialty socket to take it off, but uh, the crescent wor wrench works just fine. Being that it's a plastic cap, it's not torqued down too much. So I can get it off just fine with this. I don't feel the need to buy another tool. So I've loosened it up pretty good. Can't remember how much oil comes pouring out of this. Oh. Okay, there we go. Got a little bit dripping out. Go ahead and spin this off the rest of the way by hand. If I remember correctly, I don't think too much oil comes out. There we go. Oh, that yeah, does kind of splash right out of there. Hopefully I didn't get nothing on my camera. There we go. I got a little bit on my cardboard here. So we got that drip draining. I don't know if you can see, I guess you can see the filter there a little bit. It's an element style filter. Um, normally comes kind of a white and tan color, but now that it's in the oil, it's all black there. It's a little hard to see. Okay. So let's see if we can turn this and get the drain plug at the same time. You can see the drain plug is back here. So we can get that loosened up and then we can let everything drip. Get all that old oil out. Okay, let's set this off to the side. My ratchet for the drain plug is over there. I reposition myself. Got a little bit of oil there on the camera. Okay. Let's see if I can get this to reach. Now this is a, uh, let's see, what is this, 8 millimeter? Yeah, 8 millimeter hex head to get the drain plug off. Oops, so I have it, oh, there we go. Okay, let's make sure we got enough 
tub here to catch all this. This car holds roughly 9 to 10 quarts of oil, so there's quite a bit here when you change it. Oof, there we go. Then I had the cardboard down. Get anything on the driveway. Oh, I gotta crack this open on my pan or it's gonna blurt the whole time. There we go. There we go. Alright, so now we got everything draining. We'll wait for it to finish draining. I'm gonna give it a good half hour or so, let everything, all the old stuff get out. And uh, once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and install the new filter, put the drain plug with the new washer back in, and then um, probably after that I'll go ahead and clean it all up and then I'll go ahead and install the new oil and that's about it so when I get back to you we'll be buttoning it all up with the new filter and finishing off this oil change all right now we let all the old oil drain out and I went ahead and got the new element uh, filter pressed into place now one word on that is, you know, it's this, uh, you see this opening here, it's the same on the other side. And it slides over a little uh, metal sleeve that comes out. And it does take a little bit of force to kind of, uh, to get it to seat on there properly. Uh, one thing I recommend is, you know, don't press it too hard. I imagine you could uh, rip and damage uh, this uh, paper that's on the end. This, uh, I don't know what if it's paper or some type of uh, reinforced plastic or whatnot, but uh, I basically take it, uh, line it up straight, press it on firm, and kind of wiggle it as I'm pressing and kind of walk it on, and I can feel it sliding. And once it's you know seated all the way, you can tell it won't go anymore. So we've got that, got the new uh, O-ring in place here on the cap, which comes with the filter. And like I said, this is a plastic cap. I believe they recommend torquing it to uh, it says like 25 newton meters here on the cap itself. Uh, but uh, being plastic and then once it seats it's pretty much in there so you can kind of you can tell when you got it on there we go Oops, something's not right it's not going on smoothly I think I have it straight the center of this cap does go in the filter as well so you want to make sure you get it straight and also be in plastic don't want to over torque it okay I'm in there I'm just not getting the thread started evenly no something's not right all right loosen this up there we go It's not going right. Let me uh, see what's going on here. Okay, I got it. Went ahead and got the cap on. I was having a little trouble lining it up. For some reason, it wanted to seat on there sideways, and when I'd get it to a certain point, it would bind. I just had to kind of press. I guess what I was doing was working against uh, inside of the cap. There's another um, round uh, kind of sleeve that's on a little bit of a spring that goes inside of the filter. And I guess what was happening is I didn't have that seated in straight. So it was causing the whole cap to kind of twist a little bit sideways here and wasn't uh, screwing in properly. So I got it lined up. I got a little bit deeper underneath the car, which would have blocked the camera view. So that's why I went ahead and turned the camera off. Uh, and took a look at this directly from underneath and saw that it was kind of sitting a little sideways here. So I pressed it in and you heard it, you know, I felt it go, you know, kind of slide right into the end of the filter and then the cap started going on just fine. And like I said, I used this uh, crescent wrench here to tighten it down. Uh, basically, you know, it tightens until this plastic lip right here hits the aluminum housing. And then after that, you really don't have too much more you can turn it before it's tight. So I go ahead and do it until it just kind of seats and it, you know, after that, after it's seated to get it to turn more, it's going to take a ton of force. And that's where I stop when I realize it's going to take a lot of force. And I haven't had any problems. I did oil change once before and I didn't have any leaks or anything from that. So everything's seated up there and we got the drain plug here. Um, got a new O-ring on it. 
Um, Porsche recommends that you change the drain plug every time you do an oil change. Um, I haven't done that. I don't see a reason for it. You know, the threads don't get damaged. Yes, it is an aluminum drain plug. You get a little bit of, you know, marring here from the Allen head, but that's about it. Um, when I did the oil change the first time, I went ahead and ordered a couple new drain plugs. But the ones that came from Porsche, um, the threads were all chewed up and uneven. And I felt like using those would have damaged the threads on the pan. So I went ahead and stuck with this. It seemed to be um, a lot higher quality than the drain plugs that they're selling you today. So um, I guess that's up to you. If you feel like your drain plug's damaged, uh, go ahead and change it. But uh, like I said, this used one that came off looked to be better shape than the brand new one from Porsche. And uh, I don't see a reason for changing it every single time. If there's somebody out there that knows a reason, please feel free to let me know. I mean, I can understand if it gets damaged or the threads are too weak, but it's not like it's torqued down to, you know, 50 foot-pounds. You only put it on for about 20. I'm trying to kind of clean the hole up a little bit, but... Like I said, I let this drain for about half an hour. Went and made a sandwich, had lunch. So I got pretty much everything out. Just want to make sure you get this bad boy seated properly. We don't want to strip out the pan. And you start yourself a nightmare. <laughs> Another job there. Alright, where did my ratchet go? It's on the other side, of course. Okay. And like I said, this bad boy holds about nine quarts, so that drain that pan is heavy and full. Like I said here, you don't want to overdo this. You do not want to damage this pan and have to swap it out. It's not very thick, so there's not like there's a lot of threads that are holding it. So as I'm turning it, I can feel it starting to compress the gasket, and then I feel it you know, it's getting tight, 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 and at the point where I'm going to have to torque it. And you can kind of see the pan kind of here bending. You can see it flexing as you tighten it. So that's where I stop. Right there. Alright, well, that's basically it. All that's left now is, like I said, I'm going to clean up underneath here with some degreaser and spray it off. And then we'll fill it up from the top. But that's basically it. And then, oh yeah, then i got to replace this bracket that went along here. And the... Uh, what is it that uh fibrous uh under panel thing but i'm going to go ahead and clean that up too before i put that back on but that's basically it that's how you change the oil on a porsche panamera s now this s model is the v8 but i imagine the procedure is exactly the same for the six cylinder i can't see them having a whole different setup under here so basically any panamera the sick v6 or the eight or even the turbo it's going to be pretty much the same procedure and everything I imagine is going to be in about the same place. All right, well, I hope you found that informative. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to browse the channel and subscribe. Thanks again.